and I'm going to actually try and pinch this wire between the two washers, that's the plan. Oh hi! Sorry, I was just watching Dave's tackle box. Um, and he's building a very nice looking rebuildable atomizer. And I am going to be as well. I'm going to show you how I, in the third part of my rebuildable diary, how to reconstruct and assemble the Arga T. Mm. Um, I've got it here broken down in several of its parts. Now let me just walk you through them here. Uh, here we have the the tank glass. Um, I didn't realise it. I thought it was plexiglass, you know, sort of plastic, but it is actually glass. Um, the centre post section with um, the two nuts on it. Now you'll notice when you get this there, there will be three on there but I've actually taken one off. Actually I might have lost one. Um, but you know it works fine with two. Uh, if you see here as well there's a little washer. That is the only bit that I have added to this. Oh no I tell a lie. If we look go back to the center post here you will see that piece of plastic on there. That is just a bit of silicon cut down from one of the many broken e-cigs I've got. Um, and then that just insulates that centre post when you actually put it into the device. I'll show you that when I put it all together. Here's the top cap. And you'll see there that, that that's got um, one, two, three holes, a wire connector and the, the middle hole which... Uh, screws it all together and there's the top cap top cap that reminds me of a cartoon um, top cap and uh, there's the many say tiny air hole I haven't drilled it out many have because they say the 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 draw is too tight on the Arga T but I, I personally found it fine now the Arga T, you can actually use silica wick and stainless steel. This time round tonight, I'm going to do the stainless steel. And just a couple of little hints and tips about how to spot, sort of spot and stop hot spots. Wow. And um, yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, what I've picked up over putting mine together, probably 3,742 coils that went wrong, I think I've come to the conclusion that I can do it now. There's all the bits, let's get this thing back together. So glass goes on there and you'll see inside there it's got a, an orange o-ring, it does come with a spare one of those so that's all good. Right now these fit through that hole but the washer doesn't so that's why the washer's not on there. Now we just screw this together and that is threaded inside the top bit just do it so it's finger tight and there's your tank all together. All that's left is to put the, the washer on and the top cap obviously but we won't put that on yet until we build it. Now I noticed in Dave's show that I'm watching on VaporTrails.tv he's got a fancy schmancy um, Siam Mods Atty stand. They look really good and really heavy and really useful. There you go. Right, let's get building. I've got all the stuff over here, over there, um, with uh, all that I need to build a wick. But I'm going to skip a few stages because I've covered them in um, in my other previous rebuildable diaries, like how to carbon a wick and all that sort of stuff. If you're watching the third part of this, which you are, hi, um, you'll know all that stuff already. Just go back and watch the previous ones or watch somebody who really knows what they're talking about. So, uh, right, the first thing is making a wick. So uh, I've roughly sort of eyeballed some stainless steel and that's roughly the size that I need. If, if you're trying to work out, I normally just sort of hold it up against the tank and see how big it is, thinking that it shouldn't be really any taller than the centre post. Um, otherwise you might get shorts on the top cap. So that's the size of my stainless steel. 
Now I'm going to get rolling it and really as I've said in previous videos and I'm not going to go into this in great detail but uh, you know it's it's akin to rolling uh, a cigarette really so but I'll say it again this is key trying to keep it straight the roll straight so you don't have one edge longer than the other if that makes sense you know so it, when you get to the end you've got you've still got that straight line assuming that you've cut the uh, stainless straight if it starts out looking like that I can pretty much wind it into a state that um, it's it's going to work um, you can see that that's that sort of arriving at wick now if you put this if I put this in the hole here I don't want it to be super skinny I want it just to sort of fit in that hole pretty snugly so I would say that's that's getting there that is getting there so I'm going to do the flame thing and uh, carbonize it. Um, I tend to just, I don't quench anymore, I just use e-liquid. I haven't had any hot spots on, on stuff that I haven't quenched. Some people like to do it. If you want to, go for it. Some people don't even carbonize it, they pulse it, but uh, I've had mixed results with that. But on this occasion, I'm going to use the flame thrower of death. Another thing that I find really useful is one of these. Oh my god, I've got a messy mind! Um, is one of these sort of, uh, I think they're called extra hands. Looks like a, a, a robot magnifier headed robot. And I, I do use it to hold hot things and let it suffer for me. I'm going to take that off there, that is completely um, oxidised several times and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that into the hole it needs to go into, so that's that one, and it's time to get winding. Right, uh, I've got a length of wire here, um, I would say that's about 9 inches but if you ask my wife it's probably about 4. Um, and that may, uh, may look a lot of wire there but it, it's just handy to have handles to be able to, to work if you're working with tiny little bits it's really fiddly so that's what I tend to, to do get too much so let me just now you can see we're going to put it under this screw here and it's going to wrap around the, the wick and it's going to attach to that centre post we'll go around that side put that down there with a finger lock it off then get a screwdriver and tighten that up down so that is now on there now you could wind that round that wick but the the wick is flexible and, and a bit fragile so we don't want it to break so what I use is a, a standard sewing needle, it's quite a thick one and I just put that down there into there just to give it a little bit of rigidity to um, deal with the winding of the uh, the wire now first one is important you get it quite flat I find which sort of determines the the initial winds now you can see that that's not too bad at all. Again, I'm keeping them tight but not tight enough to sort of bite into the stainless. You don't want to, you know, you're not you're not it's not strangling it. Get that under that either under or over on top of that washer. Hold it with a finger. It is key at that point as well in the process to knock the camera off. Please, if you're doing this at home, do do that as well. So if we go back, you can see here that that is now under there. It's. Um, I'm just going to make sure that's tight. And that is. So you can see that washer has really closed the gap 
between the coil and the center post. You can now go around and just check the spacing of your coils. Just going to lift that one up a bit. If you find that the, the coil moves around, moves the wick about, then just use the needle to steady it. It's now time to trim some of this wire off. I'm not going to trim it all off, just in case something goes wrong and I need to adjust, um, just so you've got enough to work with. When you adjust, you adjust the center post one, um, so you can trim the, 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 the base screw one off quite short. And I just uh, bend that over and get that out of the way. Um, and I tend to leave that one up so it's not going to make a contact and short anything. So now I can take the needle out, get some e-liquid and just um, make sure that that is wet. Right, and it's time to give it a fire. There we go, that's firing quite nicely. No hot spots. So I'm going to drop a little bit more on here. I'm going to trim this last little bit of wire off the center post. It's important to line up your air hole with your wick. Just pop that on there. It's vaping. These tend to just need a little bit of a, a pulse and that will build up a layer of stuff on those coils and as long as you've got no cracking hotspots and I can't see that I do, in fact I've got no hotspots, um, as, that, as that juice burns off the coils should glow evenly and they are so put a little bit more juice on there and then it'll be time to fill my tank uh, this is running at about 4.2 watts I tend to start off low in terms of um, voltage or wattage to start with with a new coil just to ease it in that will bed in nicely I can tell um, good flavor it's sizzling away like a champ and there we go. So that's the Arga T wicked and ready to fill. And that concludes part three of my rebuildable diary. There was a time that I thought that rebuildables weren't really for me when I got this. But I'm glad I persevered and watched loads of videos of other people who've, who've cracked it and they've been a great help and in some way I hope this has been a great help to anybody who's considering who, who or who has perhaps even shelved their uh, rebuildable because it is worth persevering because they do produce great vapor great flavor and they are rebuildable so it's it's something that we can keep doing ourselves and at the moment that that feels important that feels the right thing to be doing